Hi, in this module we'll study an artwork by one of the most popular pop artists. We use the film and critique method to closely examine Andy Warhol's Marilyn Diptych. So just like we've done in the past with other artworks, we'll go through the four steps of the film and art critique. We'll start with a description where we'll identify the subject matter and relevant background information. Then we'll move to analysis where we'll discuss the work in terms of the elements and principles of art. From there, we'll do an interpretation in which we'll discuss the message of the artwork and the artist's intent. And finally, we'll evaluate the artwork and decide whether or not we think it was successful. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the artwork. First things first, the title of this work is Marilyn Diptych. Funny title, I know, but more on that later. The painting was created in 1962 by Andy Warhol. The subject matter of the piece is a portrait of actress Marilyn Monroe repeated over and over again. Now, Andy Warhol used acrylic paint, but he didn't actually paint each individual face with a brush. Instead, he used what is essentially a stenciling technique called screen printing. You see, he created a silk screen stencil for one portrait and used it to repeat the image over and over again. Now, it's one thing to see an image of an artwork on a computer screen, but to really get a feel for it, you need to see it in real life. Unfortunately, we can't fly to the museum right now, but here's a photo that may give you a little more perspective. This is the photo of the painting as it's displayed at the Tate Museum of Modern Art in London. It measures 205 centimeters by 289 centimeters. In feet, that's almost 7 by 9. Okay, so with the analysis, we'll examine how Warhol used the elements of art and principles of design when creating the work. So what elements and principles immediately jump out at you? I think the most obvious is the principle of repetition. After all, the actress's face is repeated 50 times. Now, we won't talk about why he did that just yet. We'll save that for the interpretation. For now, what other elements and principles are prominently featured? What about color? Or more specifically, the contrast in color between the bright and colorful left side and the drab black and white right half? To that same end, we could point out the symmetrical balance that neatly divides the image in half. And one more important element in this painting is form. Look at the form, or lack thereof, of Marilyn's face. It's very flat and stamp-like, as opposed to being realistically modeled with shading and highlights. Now for the fun part. Let's talk about why we think Andy Warhol made these choices. So what's the message here? What was Andy Warhol saying to his audience with this painting? Well, the great thing about art is that the interpretation can be subjective. Each person who views the painting might take away something a little different. However, with this piece, the commonly accepted interpretation is that Warhol was commenting on Marilyn Monroe's life and death as a celebrity. Although she was worshipped as a star, her fame ultimately dehumanized her and reduced her to a manufactured product. How'd I get all that from the painting? Let's take a look. A good interpretation of an artwork is one that is supported by evidence. So what evidence is there to support our conclusions? For this painting, the first clue is in the title. The word diptych comes from a style of early Christian painting in which two panels were joined together with a hinge and used as an altarpiece. Many critics believe Warhol was referencing this diptych painting in which the newborn Jesus on the left is in contrast to a very macabre image of Jesus on the cross on the right hand side. The religious nature of the diptych style alludes to the fact that Monroe was worshipped in popular culture. It also gives insight as to why the left panel is colorful and vibrant while the right panel is not. The left side symbolizes life while the right symbolizes death. It's also worth pointing out that the painting was done in 1962, just months after Marilyn Monroe's death. So what about all the repetition? What's the message there? By using the mechanical screen printing process to repeat the flat stamp white representation of Marilyn's portrait, Warhol was comparing her celebrity to a product mass produced in a factory. This is a theme that he used a lot in his work, like in his paintings of the Campbell soup cans. So what do you think? Regardless of what Andy Warhol's intent may or may not have been, how does the artwork make you feel? What conclusions do you draw? And more importantly, what evidence can you give in terms of the elements of art and principles of design to back that conclusion up? That brings us to our last section, evaluation. Essentially, the evaluation is where we decide whether or not we think the artwork is successful. Do we like it? Hate it? Is it good? Bad? Ugly? Do you think the artists achieved their goal with the artwork? 
These are questions that you have to answer for yourself. There's no right or wrong answer as long as you can justify your conclusions. Personally, I'm a big fan of Orho and the Maryland Diptych. I like how he packs so much symbolism and meaning into such a simple design. Popular culture has evolved quite a bit since the 60s, but in today's world of social media, I think Warhol's commentary on fame and celebrity are more relevant than ever. But what do you think? 